This is the second revision of my AI-powered solar weeder. It drives around and uses image classification to look for weeds. When it finds one, it focuses this large Fresnel lens over the weed, lifts the lid, and uses the focus power of the sun to burn the weed where it stands. Now, it hosts its own Wi-Fi hotspot, so to control it, we just connect to the weeder Wi-Fi, navigate to its webpage, and tell it what to do from that webpage. My goal with this is simple. Cheaper, cleaner food for everyone. This robot is a starting point for something that can reduce or eliminate chemical use in agriculture while maintaining yields and saving time for farmers, which means cheaper, cleaner foods for consumers. Big ag companies like John Deere are using the power of AI to realize some of these goals, but their products are really quite expensive and they're out of reach for most farmers. With this, I want to demystify image classification and control of small robots and hopefully show that really inexpensive projects like this can have a big impact for small holding farmers. It's not a finished product, I get that. Um, it's not going to be used day to day yet, but by getting this in front of more people, I hope to have more brains and eyes thinking about and looking at this and how to improve it and eventually come to something can be used more broadly. So join me as we look at how to put this thing together and operate it. In this series, I'll show you how to print, build, wire and operate this as well as test it up um, and then customize the image classification model for the weeds that you find in your yard or farm or garden. Uh, and the GitHub link is down below. It's got everything you need. Uh, all the latest info on bill of materials, schematics, 3D printer files, image classification model, and code to control the robot. So, let's get started. In this first video, I'll give you an overview of how this thing works. And in subsequent videos, I'll show you things like how to print it, build it, assemble it, wire it up, test it, customize your image classification model, and then set it loose uh, in your yard or farm. Um, just a few things before we get into the how does this work though. This can start fires right here. It's a really large lens and it focuses the sun. So don't operate this anytime that you have a fuel load sitting on the ground. So dry leaves that could have a fire that spreads or dry grass or mulch that's too dry. I operate this thing uh, often in the spring uh, and it's on you know bare dirt with just a few weeds in it or uh, after you know uh, we've got green grass outside I can I can run it in the yard or something like that. So don't operate this where you can start fires. So how does this work? First off is the Fresnel lens. This thing right here is, think of it like a giant magnifying glass. Um, it takes incoming parallel sun, sunlight and focuses it down over uh, about a 200 millimeter distance into a little point on the ground. So you can imagine the power of the sun right here being focused onto a little pinprick. Uh, it'll burn just about anything that it hits. This is actually used often to start campfires. Second, the mechanicals. We've got these nice wheels here. This is all 3D printed. We've got a, a little uh, cog here in the middle that is powered by this motor right here. It's a 50 RPM motor that turns these things. We've got more 3D printed body here and inside the body we've got little housings for just all sorts of electronics that control this thing. And then we've also got this uh, 3D printed body that comes all the way up here and holds the lens assembly and a bunch of servo motors. Now what's actually going on here is uh, these are screws controlled by these worm motors right down here. And so when these worm motors turn, it takes this whole assembly up on top and moves it up and down. The purpose of these arms right here is just to keep things from, from moving around, falling over. Uh, on the servos, we've actually got this right here, which allows the lens to move left and right. We call that swinging left and right. And then, this is a good idea here, um, all of these motors used to be in the previous version right up here on the lens and they had to support the weight of the lens. It was just too much. Uh, we have a counterbalance system. So the weight on this side and this side of our swing pivot point right here is about equal. So we're not actually having to bear the load of this. The 3D printed materials do that for us. Uh, this motor right here, this servo right here, allows the entire lens to roll left and right. This motor right here allows the whole lens assembly to tilt up and down. And this final servo motor right here actually picks up the lid when we're ready to expose the full power of the sun to whatever's sitting below this lens. Last up, I mentioned that we had these screws here. The purpose of these is actually to control the distance that the lens is from the ground. This has about a 200 millimeter focal length 
And so we need to be able to move this entire assembly up and down to keep this focused at whatever point we are on the ground. You can see how right now, you know, the center of this, it has a short distance to the ground, but if we were to bring this up a bit, now this whole lens is higher up off the ground, we're gonna need to move this Z axis via these uh, screws right here, down, 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 so that we can keep that focus. Next up is the brains of this whole thing. Inside here, we have a little Raspberry Pi 02W, and this does all of the work for us. Uh, it hosts a website, uh, it hosts a Wi-Fi hotspot, where we can connect to the web page that we use to control this. It actually controls all of the electronic speed controllers that turn our wheels and move these servo motors and all that sort of stuff. And it takes photos via this little lens right there, this little camera right down here. And with those photos, we can break them into pieces, divide them up into about a two inch by two inch, five center by, by five centimeter grid, and examine each one of those grid pieces to see if there is a weed inside there. When we realize that there is a weed, that same Raspberry Pi moves this thing around so that it's centered over the weed, lifts the lens, and kills it. So, what does this look like when it actually runs? Let's have a look. Quick example run. Um, I just started this up, I connected to weeder.local, and I've pulled up the website weeder.local slash run. And I also usually pull up just the weeder.local so that I can view all of the logs here. I'll scroll down to the very bottom one and, and click into that directory and you know, take a look at the pictures that are being taken. The weeder's sitting out there, it's just waiting for commands right now. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is come back over here and choose orient to sun. That's gonna use the sun tracker and uh, than the cameras that are located inside. So let's zoom in on this, have a look. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, orient to sun. It's gonna use the sun tracker first. There it goes, it's trying to find the sun. It's springtime right now, so the sun's quite high, or quite low in the sky. Uh, it's really gonna have to tilt far to get Let's do a so. normal run. And we'll kill dandelions over a distance of, say, two feet. So just a, a demo run here. I'll click submit. And off it goes. It drives forward a little bit. What it's doing right now is actually looking at the ground directly under that light uh, and it checks an arc under here. You can see that's nicely focused there. Um, it checks an arc under there so whatever the swing motor can cover as it's as it's driving it's gonna try to actually uh, kill in that area. So here it's just seen uh, that dandelion there and it's trying to run and kill it. And so what you see here is uh, that dandelion is smoking. So if we zoom back, you can kind of see what this is doing. Um, it's driving forward and back because it knows that um, it needs to cover a small square area. And it's actually running these Z motors up and down because it knows that it's gonna have to try to focus not just on the ground, but a little bit above it. So it's running those Z motors up and down. And in between each run, it's actually moving this uh, swing motor slightly so that it can cover an entire uh, patch of ground there. And then when it's finished, it's gonna put this lid back down. So it goes through a, a short routine here. So there you have it. This thing runs. Um, it does a pretty good job, actually. Uh, when I compare it to the previous version of this thing, you can see that here, uh, it's a lot smaller. It's cheaper. There's better control because we talked about how the weight of the lens is counterbalanced. We're not putting all that weight directly on these servo motors. So we have a lot better control. Um, and we're doing better image classification now. The models have gotten better. Our compute speed is a little bit higher. Um, but most important, compared to the previous model of this, it can actually be replicated. The previous one was built by hand. You had to customize the code every time you built a new one, and it just wasn't something that somebody else could pick up and, and make. 
This is 3D printed. Even if you don't have a 3D printer and you have to build it by hand, at least the 3D models are out there and you can get measurements off them and see how you could recreate this by hand. So it's something that anybody could sit down and make and the assembly is pretty much standard now. You don't have to customize the code to assemble your version of this and get it running. Um, the bad parts of it though, as you can see, the body of this thing is not very far off the ground when it's sitting on the ground. So the ground clearance is extremely low. One of the best parts about the previous weeder is it was really tall and it could sort of fly over the top of a row uh, in the garden and still look down on weeds. The focal length of that lens was 600 mils, so it was quite a bit you know, higher up off the ground. And a future revision of this is gonna have to have much bigger tires. I'm thinking maybe a 300 millimeter lens. And then we should actually reach down from above uh, to control the height of the, the lens off the ground as opposed to this, which reaches up from the ground. That'll get much higher ground clearance, but it'll still keep us close enough to everything that we can uh, do a pretty good job of controlling and focusing. And we can reuse all of this 3D printed assembly. Second, it's a little bit slow. Um, this is a 300 millimeter diameter lens. There's a 400 millimeter out there and you know, you're gonna just suck up so much more sun and you're gonna burn things a lot faster using that lens. And as long as you're doing a, a, a bigger, taller weeder and now that you can replicate this stuff more easily, you could have more than one lens operating at a time so that you really can crank through more weeds uh, per hour when you're operating one of these things. Last and probably most important, I have a pretty weak image classification model on here. There's a few hundred examples of like three kinds of weeds. As more people start to pick this up, uh, we could have those images contributed into the training model so that we could have a much more robust model that has a lot more weeds to select from. And, you know, as it gets better and better, you wouldn't have to customize the images in the future because somebody already did it, you know. Uh, you've already got a few hundred weeds preloaded and they'll cover most of your bases most of the time. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more unique and useful do-it-yourself builds.